Let's start with news from West Asia. There's mounting anger, frustration among the Israelis following the announcement of the death of six hostages in Gaza. Massive demonstrations erupted across the country after the bodies were recovered from a tunnel in the city of Rafa. Total of bodies of six hostages were recovered. Crowds of about 500,000 strong demonstrated in Jerusalem, Tel Aviv and other cities demanding Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to do more to bring home the remaining 101 hostages. Police clashed with demonstrators during a massive rally in Tel Aviv by tens of thousands of Israelis standing in support with the families of the hostages. In, in Jerusalem, demonstrators surrounded the Prime Minister's residence. The bodies of hostages have been returned to Israel. An Israeli health ministry spokesperson citing forensic reports said they were murdered by Hamas terrorists in a number of shots at a close range. 48 to 72 hours prior to when their bodies were recovered. There are still 101 hostages being held. Six were alive last week, from what I understand, at least up until 48 hours before they were executed in captivity. So I hold everyone accountable, him along with every stakeholder in the negotiation process. Today, I urge my government and all the states of the world to make a deal, make it possible, make it happen. It's too late for us. It's too late for Carmel. I will never hug her again, but 101 People can still hug their families. For them, make the deal, save lives. Netanyahu has made it clear Israel would not rest until it catches all those responsible. In recent days, as Israel has been holding intensive negotiations with the mediator in a supreme effort to reach a deal, Hamas is continuing to steadfastly refuse all the proposals. Even worse, at the exact same time it murdered six of our hostages. Whoever murders hostages does not want a deal. This after reports quoted a senior Hamas official saying that Israel, in its refusal to sign a ceasefire agreement, was to blame for the deaths. Shami Abu Zuri said that the Israelis should choose between Netanyahu and the deal. Meanwhile, U.S. President Joe Biden said he was devastated and outraged by the death of the 23-year-old Israeli-American Goldberg, Polly, and other hostages. However, he said he is still optimistic about a ceasefire deal. According to reports, the United States is in talks with Egypt and Qatar about a final take-it-or-leave-it deal that it plans to present to the parties in the coming weeks. A senior administration official quoted in the report said the failure of the two sides to accept the deal would mark the end of the U.S.-led negotiation. All right, for more on this, we're now being joined by Peter Kuznick, Professor of History and Director of the Nuclear Studies Institute at American University, live from Washington, D.C. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, Professor. Glad to be with you. Uh, so as you heard, the protests that we're seeing in Israel, the biggest since the war broke out. Do you think these strikes will perhaps prove to be a turning point and this will push Israel to perhaps change its strategy, accept a ceasefire deal? The fact that Hamas has said that the six people whose bodies were recovered from Gaza were on the hostage release deal, their names were on the list for that as well. That has only added to the growing anger and outrage. How do you assess this? I think it's tragic. Uh, these six people who were killed unnecessarily mm. add to the tens of thousands, scores of thousands of dead Palestinians who have already lost their lives in this fighting. And it's a tragedy or a war crime of immense proportions. The Netanyahu government's position is not only denounced by the Israelis, 
is decried by all the humanity in the world. And yet Netanyahu looks out only for himself and his narrow vision and his personal safety and security. These demonstrations in Israel today are enormous. Hundreds of thousands of people, as many as 700,000, 300,000 in Tel Aviv alone, and strikes starting tomorrow. Uh, can this pressure Netanyahu? Perhaps if it's so overwhelming that it looks like the Israeli parliament will finally act to overthrow him, to impeach him, and to begin to prosecute him, then maybe he will act. But left to his own devices, he has shown no interest in freeing the hostages, no interest in getting a ceasefire, no interest in negotiating a serious resolution to this horrific conflict. And the ones who have suffered the most are not the Israeli and American hostages, mm -hmm. although they have certainly suffered more than they deserve to, but the ones who have suffered the most are the women and children in, Ga in Gaza. You know, the official figure is a little over 40,000, mm -hmm. but the British medical journal Lancet says it's up around 200,000 dead Palestinians. Well, the answer is somewhere in between, but it is unconscionable what is happening. Right, Mr. Kuznick, as of now, we don't know uh, the strikes in Israel, if it will gain momentum or not. It, it will be just seeing day one of those large-scale strikes. But talk to us more about uh, the issues that Netanyahu is facing within his cabinet right now, especially with the Israeli Defense Minister, Yoav Gallant, opposing Netanyahu's stance of deploying the IDF troops at the Philadelphia Corridor, which is also a point of contention during the uh, ceasefire talks, the last round of ceasefire talks. Meanwhile, his finance minister, uh, is Bezalel Smotrich, and his national security minister, they all have threatened to topple the government if a ceasefire deal is secured. So you do speak of how Netanyahu is not interested in a ceasefire deal, but how do you assess the Israeli prime minister navigating this situation within his cabinet? The Israeli prime minister needs to take a morally correct stance. He's been on the wrong side of morality and the wrong side of history ever since the retaliation for the horrific attack that occurred on October 7th that killed 1,200 Israelis and took another 250 hostage. Uh, but the Israeli people have had enough of this. They, the Israeli people certainly hate Hamas and blame Hamas for the atrocities that occurred. However, they say enough is enough, and we need to end the fighting and bring home the remaining hostages who are dying probably by the day. But there are more than 100 hostages remaining, and probably several scores of them are still alive. And so led by the hostage families, the Israeli public is standing up to Netanyahu. About The estimate is that about 70% of the Israelis are opposed to what Netanyahu is doing and blame Netanyahu. So if his government does topple, we're going to likely get a more progressive government in there. You've got a lot of, he's in a coalition with extreme right wingers who are basically fascists, who are against the Palestinians, hate the Palestinians, and don't want to give any rights to the Palestinians, and are opposed to a two-state solution. But that is out of step not only with the Israeli public now, but with the international community. So the fact that the American leaders, Biden and Harris, are making this possible by providing the weapons means that they're accessories to a genocide. Hmm. So they themselves are, are liable for war crimes prosecution. So the world sees this as a black and white issue now. Right. Not that the world supports Hamas and what Hamas represents, but they see what Israel is doing hmm. and that it is against the will of the Israeli people and the rest of the world population. It's a tragic situation, but something has to be done right. immediately, immediately. Uh, right, Professor. In fact, the United States is also slated to put forth a take it or leave it deal for Gaza ceasefire. Do you think this would perhaps be Washington's and other regional mediators last attempt to secure a deal? 
I don't think it'd be the last attempt. Hmm. Uh, if, if Biden really wants to end this, he can say that he's temporarily cutting off all weapons supplies to Israel. That's what a lot of Americans want. That's what the younger generation wants. That's what the world community wants. And Biden and Harris are refusing to do so, so far. So it means that all of their crocodile tears that they shed for the hostages or for the victims in Gaza, you know, are really meaningless because they could do something if they chose to do so. But, uh, but that is not what they're saying. Even Kamala Harris, whose main foreign policy advisor, Philip Gordon, has been saying that this kind of policy is bankrupt, morally bankrupt. You know, they're coming across as moral imbeciles right now, as reprehensible, as complicit with the Israeli right wingers who are slaughtering the, the people in Gaza. And it's just heartbreaking to see. Right, Mr. Kuzding, just a few days ago, Kamala Harris also asserted uh, Washington's support for Israel and its right to defend itself. But thank you so much for joining us on World DNA with your insights. Thank you.